I'm T. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm B. She's B. I'm T. <laughs> and today we're here to talk to you about The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Skloot? I say Skloot. Yeah, I would say Skloot. It's a great name anyway. Um, I was lent this book by a co-worker, Larry Kenneth, and uh, he insisted I read it, so I did. And I was pretty much blown away by it because first of all I don't I don't read a lot of nonfiction I don't know if you got that from past TMBs <laughs> but I mostly read novels so I was like okay well whatever it looks it looks interesting I'll read it but it pretty much changed the way I think about my body <laughs> well yes so uh, just to give you a quick rundown of the novel it centers your novel oh sorry the Non-fiction book. <laughs> it centers around Henrietta Lacks, who was an African American woman who contracted, contacted, contracted, contracted. was diagnosed, diagnosed with cervical cancer. Um, just at the time when people were trying to figure out how to grow cells outside of the human body, so that they could use them for various types of testing and things like that. Her cells turned out to be super cells and a lot of the medical uh, breakthroughs that occurred from like the 1950s onward have been as a result of the cells that were able to be cultured from, from, from body. body. Yeah. And so the story traces sort of the medical advances as well as um, oh sort of the, the moral and ethical issues that come with using a person's body for science. And uh, Rebecca Sklute basically became kind of obsessed with the story since she was a high school student and she found out about the halo cells, which is what they're called. And um, she became a science writer, she became a writer, and she um, decided that she was just going to do it. She was going to write this book. And so she started to try to track down Henrietta Lacks's family. And she had a lot of trouble um, yes. getting them to talk to her because uh, throughout the story you realize that they all felt betrayed by the medical community because of what happened and they never really knew what really happened and that was part of the betrayal. And you know it, the book takes a look at sort of the racial divisions within the United States and I assume Canada has very similar things although Canada probably more likely to be based on poverty than race but um, sort of racial divisions and how these people were treated based on their educational levels and their race and what their value was as people mm -hmm. other than just like as people who supported Henrietta Lacks other than just as Henrietta Lacks the HeLa cell the tissue yes, grower. exactly because she was a person and what's interesting is throughout the book um, they talk about this picture of Henrietta, which is from the front cover, we've sold out of the book at the Yay! store, so I cannot bring the book up. <laughs> um, they had this picture of her, which uh, was, I think, lost a couple of times. Was yes. is is was published without the family's knowledge in several textbooks, and throughout the years was republished in articles and things like that. And so the family would find these articles in this picture of her and they would be like, there she is, there, how can she be there? How can I see that picture there and not have it, right? So it's a little bit about uh, ownership of your self-image and your physical body and what that means. And it, like, there's a lot of women, women issues that come up. I mean, as a woman, you know, when you get uh, an invasive uh, procedure done like that, like basically testing uh, a tumor on your cervix, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. And to not know what happens with that piece of you uh, yeah. is probably a very strange feeling. Which is an interesting thing about the book because I, the strength of the book is that it gives you both a human look at those dilemmas as well as the scientists look, look yeah. and they're often in conflict I mean lots of scientists talk about informed consent and they say things like you know we asked and they were aware of blah 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 but you know 
as a former cancer patient, knowing there are bits of me floating around, it made me really think. People come to you at your most vulnerable yeah. and say, we would like to take a piece of you because testing may help other people. Other people. And yeah. you think to yourself, I don't want anyone else to feel Me. and go through yeah. what I'm going through. Yeah. Of course I will. And then you go through your experience and you lose your home or you go in debt or you know, you make choices for your family. Yeah. Well, especially in the States, right? Yeah. Like it, it is costly to man. be a sick person <laughs> is an expensive process. And but once your tissue is given away other people can make money off of can your benefit from it. thing, yeah. off of your DNA and off of yeah. your body, and you don't have a right to anything from that. And I think it's really interesting that you're, yeah. you know, you have a right to go broke trying to stay alive, but someone else has a right to sell your tissues and in to order use to, it to yeah. to make medicine to sell as a pharmaceutical company or whatever yeah. to sell to the medical uh, system. Yeah. So it's. It's a little bit messed up, and the more people know about that kind of messed upness, yes. the more I think the awareness about um, the you know uh, having Medicare in the states, how important that is, and how people deserve uh, that kind of thing uh, in an especially if they're poor. Well, in you know. <laughs> Even rich, even people with a lot of money, I, we often, people would say to my family, oh, you know, if it was my child, I'd give anything to keep my child mm -hmm. alive. But people who say that don't, don't really understand know. the questions you're going to be asking, the questions, and the questions that your children ask each other. I mean, do you give up your home that all of your kids share in order that one of your child children has a better chance at life, and what does that mean? And you know that's a digression from what the story is actually about. Uh, but but it's, still, it's part it's of it. It's part of the whole like making choices, or or being allowed to make those choices. I guess yeah. is the whole. And for me, it's about the definition of consent. You know. Yes. It's one thing to say to somebody, "Hey, we'd like to test yeah. so that you know this will never happen to anyone else." It's quite another thing when you look at the larger scheme of things. Well, who is testing? Who yeah. is making money? Well, and, and does it say and, yeah. um, are you are you are waiving the right to make any money off of this yourself? Yeah. We might be allowed, but yeah, you, you will not be can. allowed. That's you know I'm sure that nobody actually says that to patients. When, well, yeah. <laughs> because it's the undertone. It's not you know. Yeah. But the nice thing about the story is it weaves in those sort of personal yes. dilemmas and illustrates them with the kind of things that happen to the family. Yes and manages also to talk about and to scientists and you see scientists who are committed and yes, scientists who amazing are people working so desperately hard and even within the story there's a uh, when it first starts out the group of doctors that when they first start creating the hela cells or hela cells the doctors create a clinic in the south by where she's from they hire people of color in order to mm. to acknowledge where the information was coming from that was allowing them to, to do, this. do these yeah. experiments but when corporations become involved that quickly disappears that becomes washed away and it becomes a big business and and yeah and once it's out of their hands like they were the first yeah. guy I forget his name sorry about that <laughs> who um, who grew it and who yeah. started giving it away. Yeah. He basically gave it away, right? He did not make money off of this. No, exactly. Um, so after that, when people actually had their own cells, it became, it, well, it had a life of its own, right? <laughs> because it, it, you could do anything you wanted with it, and that's what ended up happening, is yeah. those pharmaceutical companies that made medicines and created all these vaccines from this cell, from using this cell culture, um, that they could do what they want. I mean, there was no... And it's leading us to interesting places right now. Yes, when, in the world. Know, people think companies are trying to get patents on people's DNA. Yeah, and for cloning, for all sorts of reasons. Yeah. There's lots of reasons to read this book and being aware of sort of the next level of dilemmas that are going to face us as a society as well as medical ethicists, I think is another it's good important. reason to read. And, and I think a, a 
a large, it would be interesting for a large cross-section of people to read this book. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, you will find the, the context interesting no matter yeah. what. I mean, I found it interesting for all sorts of personal reasons, but you will too, I feel certain. And so get your Kleenex. Yes. Because <laughs> once you're finished with the, oh, the yeah. interesting sort of medical tangents and follow that path, you'll find yourself skipping into the life of the people yeah. and you'll need to Kleenex. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> It's, it's tragic. very it's tragic and very sad, and it is. And uh, Rebecca Scoot does an amazing job of uh, involving you in these people's lives and making you feel for them. And be in a very respectful way. Oh, totally. Which is what I appreciated. Yeah, it was very, yeah. very amazing. So good on you, Rebecca. Yes. And also, I just.